Hello everyone, so I'm going to do an overview on the stabbing system. I've been getting a few questions here about no documentation, so it's probably easier for me to do a video on it so I can go uh, in depth on some of the properties of the system. Um, so we're going to look at the example scene broadsword um, first. So let's say you're setting up your, you know, something that you want to be able to stab, you know, a knife or a sword, an arrow. Um, essentially, you would just put your stabber, HVR stabber component on your grabbable object that has the rigid body on it. So the rigid body is required. And the first thing that you would do is add, you know, two transforms, one to define the tip and one to define the base here. And essentially that's going to uh, or my system is going to use that as the vector, which is going to define uh, the constraint line that the stabber can move along, as well as checking for uh, the angle of entry, uh, angle of entry validation checks, um, as well as you know how far down this thing can stab. Let's just, let me get this table out of the way. To show you. So you see that the sword can only go down as far as the base was defined here. So, uh, so simply just place your base uh, based on how far you want the stab line to go. And then uh, simply that those are just assigned here in tip and base. I'll come back to the settings here in a minute. Uh, stab anything is more just for fun. Um, by default, you know, if that's off, the objects that you want to stab, they simply just need to have a collider on them or a rigid body. A uh, rigid body is not required, uh, but colliders are required, and uh, the HVR stabable will tell you, you know, when this thing collides with something using the physics system, that this thing is something that can be stabbed. So if you wanted to just test or, you know, go crazy and stab anything, just toggle this on and the ignore velocity check that's a simple one as well uh, each stabable object can have a uh, velocity uh, validation that the stabber has to be moving uh, beyond some threshold otherwise the stab will not be allowed so again uh, just something for testing um, or if you just you know you don't want this thing to have a velocity check and maybe it's so sharp that it goes into anything and you can turn that on, and the velocity check will be ignored. Um, <clears throat> the fallback settings are stabable settings. Um, so stabbables can have various settings that you know help set up kind of like their material, how hard they are to stab, you know, how much friction they supply. If you wanted to, you can give the sword a, or sorry, the stabber uh, the same setting. And if it encountered a stabbable object without settings, or if you had stab anything on, then it would use those kind of as a fallback. So just trying to be flexible with, you know, different scenarios that may pop up. Uh, the projection mode, distance, and angle; those are uh, configurable joint uh, settings. As a configurable joint is what controls the actual stabbing mechanism. Um, so essentially, uh, the stab joint can potentially stretch if you're using like a physics-based player like Hexabody and you're trying to climb with it. The, you know, having a protection mode enabled with a low distance and angle will help prevent the joint from stretching. Um, if you don't need that, you can just turn it off here. There's probably some performance overhead with this to keep the joint uh, constrained. So if you want to use that, just have a read over the configurable joint documentation on you know the unity website on how exactly uh, it works um, but just leaving that option open for you guys there uh, dual stabber essentially that just means you know by default if you're not a dual stabber you can only stab on the tip end if you want to be able to stab on both tip and base ends like this spear so the tip and the base uh, transforms you can see our the tip here and the base is at the other end um, and we see I have this enabled here, and so it just lets you in initiate a stab from both tip and base. 
And then we have can run through. So that means that the base will not stop the stabbing from going any further. It can continue out the other end. So maybe like you want this arrow to hit this guy in the head and you grab the arrow shaft on this side and pull it all the way through. So if you enable can run through, then you would be able to do that. So if this was off, the object would not go any further than the base. <clears throat> um, so for colliders, uh, we have two you know, arrays here. One is all of the colliders that you want to ignore with what you stabbed. So essentially, every collider you provide here will have their physics ignored with all of the colliders that are on the stabbed object, so that way they're not uh, colliding with each other while the stab is initiated. If you do not supply this, say like on my sword, the seal of warning, uh, colliders to ignore is empty. And what happens when the game starts? Um, I cache every collider that is a child of your object for you. So if you don't have anything crazy and you're okay, all the, the, all the colliders that are children of my sword are fine to be ignored, then you don't need to set this field. Uh, stabbing colliders, you'll see here, um, I put a little too many, but I was trying to get, you know, complete coverage on this thing. But essentially, the stab will not be initiated unless a collider in this list, stabbing colliders, is the one that is colliding. So uh, I have about seven small capsules here. That way I can initiate, a, you know, a stab from any of these collision points. And a stab will not initiate from the body collider here, only these. Uh, contact offset, that's simply, you know, a collider field. Uh, Unity defaults it to 0 0.01, which is kind of obvious in virtual reality since you can get so close to an object. Uh, value of 0 0.001 will let, you know, the collision surface have less of a gap. Um, so you can change this to whatever you want it to be. It's going to be applied to the stabbing colliders. So this value, is, again, is just chosen as a default, so that way there's not much of a gap when you're like pressing this up against something. It's really noticeable to the player. Um, down here we have several, uh, you know, just debugging options because there's some, you know several validations that need to go uh, that go on when a stab is occurring. Um, so if you're not sure why, maybe you're trying to stab something and it's it's not working. Maybe the angle was too uh, shallow or the velocity was not high enough or whatsoever, you can check these on. That way you're not having to set, you know, breakpoints or logging. They're already they're already set up in the code. They just don't log anything unless you turn them on. Uh, turn them on here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so back to the settings uh, here. A scriptable object lets you define a few properties. Um, and to create any scriptable object in my framework that some of the system required, just simply right click, right click in the project, create Hurricane VR, and then you can find stabbable settings and stabber settings here to create your own settings. And then you can share these across various objects if you wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so looking at the settings here, we have validation on the angle of entry compared to the, you know, the surface normal of your collision. Uh, the sharpness will uh, define how much of the friction of the material it will ignore. So a value of one would mean no friction. And, you know, a value of say like 0.1 would um, use 90% of the friction defined in the material. Uh, unstab threshold. When you're pulling uh, the stabbing stabber out of a stabbable, you know, how far from the entry point does it need to go in the opposite direction before it will unstab? Uh, if this is too high, it'll be kind of obvious that it's kind of floating away from the collider, and you're wondering why it's not. And if it's too small, you might get uh, unstabbing too early. So value of 0.1 seems to work pretty good for that. Uh, unstab delay is simply how long after a stab is initiated before uh, unstabbing can occur. So that gives you some window of time, you know, to get the stabber in before an unstab can come out. So again, a too small of a value would mean you're trying to stab something. The stab does initiate, but then it unstabs too early. 
Um, you can also control how many objects a you know a stabber can stab. Uh, and these do use joints. Every time a stab is initiated, you get a new joint. So if you're on PC, you probably don't need to worry about this too much. Um, but if you're on Quest, you might want to rein in the amount of things that one thing can stab if you're having performance issues. Uh, perpendicular uh, threshold. Let's say if I stab this thing here, um, and the joint stretches. You know, joints do stretch. And let's say I'm yanking on the sword, you know, here to the left. How far horizontally will this thing go before I can, you know, unstab? So this is kind of just more like a fail safe if something's going wrong and this thing's kind of pulling out laterally for whatever reason. Again, usually just due to physics and stability, we can, you know, cause a stab to break free if it goes beyond some threshold laterally. Uh, yep, so just more for a fail safe. Um, and that's pretty much it for the stabbing system. Again, just tip and base to define a line. And then the settings to define, you know, the angle of entry, how sharp something is. And then we can take now, you know, a little quick look at the stabbable object in their settings. <clears throat> Again, just a stabbable, scrippable object here. Uh, a few more settings on the actual stabbable object. Um, can be impelled. Uh, okay, this I can't remember. Right. So if you want to say that an object can have that can run through a situation where the object goes in one side and out the other, um, you can leave this check checkbox. There's some raycasting going on to do some validation checks. So if you decided that your object maybe is too large for that to happen, or you don't want it to happen, you can uncheck this and save some raycasting performance when a stab is initiated. Uh, the object here can tell you, yeah, you, you define how fast your stabber has to be moving. Uh, otherwise, the stab will fail if you're below this. Um, then we have some friction settings. So we have some customization here where you can say how thick an outer shell is. So think like a skull. You know, a skull is going to be harder to penetrate, but once you get past, the outer shell of someone's skull is going to be easier. So you can say how thick it is. So let's say this is point, you know, 0.15. So if the stabber enters past, or not yet 1.5 in, uh, this damper will take effect. And again, damper is just simply the configurable joint damper, right? So it's always going to be driving uh, the stabbing object to a velocity of zero. So the higher the damper, uh, the faster it will drive your stabbing object to a zero velocity. So it's kind of just used to simulate friction or how hard it is to push something in or out. So once the stabber has gone into the object, you know, by this amount, then the secondary damper will take over. So this is just a way for you to say, you know, give something like a shell, give it some value, just test it and see if it's, you know, feels good to you. And then uh, the damper will take over here once this uh, thickness has been breached. Um, so in the example scene, uh, this guy here has a really hard shell. Um, so it's going to be harder to you know, push into. And once you breach that shell, then it will become slightly easier. Um, so these values, again, just you just have to play with them a little bit to get the kind of feeling you want. Um, so one more thing you can do here is... You know, if you don't want it to be a linear uh, difficulty, maybe you want it to go be harder the deeper it goes in or, e or easier the deeper it goes in. Um, so essentially you can assign a curve. You know, if it was like this, it's going to become harder uh, to push in the deeper you go. So this is just simply a depth, a depth percentage. So here you're not, you haven't stabbed in very far. Here you've stabbed in all the way. This is going to multiply against the damper value. Um, so if you want it to you know, be easier as you go in a little further, you would just do your curve in the other direction. All right. Um, so again, just those projection mode values, they are by default assigned on the stabber. Uh, 
just being flexible here if you wanted this to take precedence over the stabber by putting it on the stabbable object then you know it just lets you do that um limit stab depth so maybe the stabber is you know half a meter long but you only want it to go in you know say 0.3 meters you can enable this and do 0.3 meters and even though it's a long stabber it will only go in uh, up to this you know this distance in uh, locking essentially if your stabbing stabber becomes you know lower than this velocity its velocity becomes lower than this uh, for this amount of time uh, it will lock into place and then you cannot move it until you apply this amount of force at which point it will become unlocked so if you have this off you know we can see here this guy has some low friction on it and let me just pick it up and move it over and turn it upside down you know it's going to fall out right because it wasn't locked into place uh, however this one is locked into place and if i just move it up and rotate it over uh oh i think it uh it's stuck on something so try that again Actually, let's click on the rigid body and show you uh, instead. Right, you'll see that the joint itself has had all of its uh, motions locked. So because I'm moving this in the scene view without physics, it's probably wonking out. But essentially, you would have to apply amount of force on this sword with your hands or some other object um, for this to become unlocked. So if I look at these other swords that are not currently locking, you'll see that their X motion is not locked. That's what's letting them always be moving. So just depending on if you want it to lock in a place or not, maybe you're trying to make a climbing game and you might want to you know, allow locking. Uh, just depends on what your scenario is. And then the full stab is just for, you know, maybe you want to make a you know, zombie game and you want some event to tell you, uh, you know, some, some something will trigger. Hey, you've stabbed this far. Okay, so in this case, um, let's say you stab 0 0.5, 0 0.15 into this guy. The full stab event on the stabber and the stabable. I believe I have these events on both. Here, so I have the full stab event on the stabber, and click here on the head. We also have full stab event on the stabbable object. So which one, you know, whichever one you need, um, this event will execute if the stabber exceeds uh, this threshold and distance in. And then if you want this event to only fire a single time per stab, then leave this unchecked. And you can check it if you want it to be able to stab any amount of times. Um, you simply have to pull the stabber out back to this threshold. All these thresholds are, are always checked against the tip transform when we're doing distance checking. So if you pull the tip out back, you know, between zero distance in and 0.05, it's going to reset, and then you can initiate another full stab event. So just something here, maybe if, you, know, you have a zombie, you want to stab, and you know you stabbed his head, you know, all the way in or deep enough for something to happen. So you'll respond to that event and maybe deal fatal damage or something like that. And as far as the stabbing system goes, that is uh, pretty much pretty much it. Um, so hopefully that gives a little more color on the stabbing system.